Because if it wasn't repugnant humor and it actually tried to be like highbrow humor, then it would take itself too seriously and then all the bloody stuff wouldn't be fun. And if you do the opposite, then all the humor isn't fun. And so then the movie isn't fun. And then you have Batman v Superman. What's up you guys, welcome to Boss Level 8 where we make fun of movie critics. We watch the movie, The Predator, the sequel to all the other Predators, I guess? Even though it has the same name. I don't really understand how it works, but I do know that Johnny Oleksinski is gonna pretend like he does in his dumb, dumb review. If it's your first time here and you want to become one of our haters, hit the subscribe button and the little bell right next to it so you get notified every single time we have a new video. Now let's make fun of this stupid review. In 1987's Predator, Shane Black played Hawkins, the first person in the movie to be killed. Now he's the director of the latest sequel called The Predator. And his- oh, so that's the distinction. You get rid of the the. Not the band, the the. Yeah, you just add the to make it modern. That's all you do. Jet Li's movie one wasn't quite as successful as the one. This is this is just dumb. This is just stupid. All right. And his new film suffers the same fate as his old character. It dies quickly. Well, yeah, that wasn't even clever. The movie is a non-stop gore fest, except for when it stops, which is fairly often for the sake of plot. How many times do we need to see a man sliced in half and his innards cascade to the ground? That is a question you should not be asking to people who are going to see a Predator movie. Because they're gonna be like, there's a number cap? No, there isn't. There is no number cap. It's like, how many times do you want to see someone shot and killed in John Wick? The answer is, as many as you can show in the time allowed. It's like, there's not enough in and out P in the V in this porn. There's way too many naked bodies in this porn. I'm very, very upset. I actually wanted her to pay for the pizza. I thought that she was actually gonna teach her stepdaughter something interesting. But that's not what leaves you reaching for the Pepto-Bismol. More sickening is the repugnant humor. I don't understand why you would go to this and not expect repugnant humor and bloody stuff. Because if it wasn't repugnant humor and it actually tried to be like highbrow humor, then it would take itself too seriously and then all the bloody stuff wouldn't be fun. And if you do the opposite, then all the humor isn't fun. And so then the movie isn't fun. And then you have Batman v Superman. Racially offensive quips, flagrant sexism, and Tourette syndrome gag all contribute to this witless, scare-free junk. Well, to be perfectly fair, they were all soldiers with problems. <laughs> If there wasn't a sexist joke and some sort of racist quip coming from any of those people, especially someone with Tourette syndrome, where one of the ticks can be yelling things that are racist or sexist or just vulgar, then it actually wouldn't make sense for the characters. Now, if you're arguing that they shouldn't have made these characters in the first place, well, that's just, you know, a decision you don't get to make. In a particularly stupid move, one character describes the Predator's look as an alien Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> yeah. How is that stupid? That is not a stupid move. It's really funny. I mean, if the Predator had a mohawk and he was like, it looks like a 90s Tim Armstrong, I'll wait for you guys to look up 90s Tim Armstrong. Okay, now that you've seen him and know that he's from the band Rancid, it's not racist, it's just a fucking haircut joke. When a research team discovers that a new predator has some human DNA, a biologist named Casey, Olivia Munn, says, You want to know if somebody fucked an alien? This isn't bottom of the barrel material, it's bottom of the landfill. I don't understand when we got so fucking highbrow. When did that happen? There was a point where American Pie was like the most successful movie in the country. You know, Pamela Anderson was like at one point the most beautiful woman on earth, according to everyone. And she was like, if you can't laugh at a fart joke, there's something wrong with you. Laugh at fart jokes, it's fine. The fucked an alien thing was funny. Leave it alone. We don't all have to have like, ew. I'm not even saying words and I still sounded more intelligent somehow. The watered down Arnold Schwarzenegger, star of the original film, in this sixth franchise entry is Boyd Holbrook as Quinn McKenna, an ex-military firebrand. Low energy Quinn has a run-in with a predator in Mexico, and after being apprehended by American government officials, he's sent off to a psych ward to keep him quiet. It's interesting that like, you basically snuck in low energy into like, here's a little bit about the plot the character. Just so you can like, like not inform us of a little bit of a, about the plot of the character, but like just kind of sneak in your opinion of the character and the actor. That's lame. It's like, hey, did you hear Coldplay had a new shit album out? Um, I heard they had a new album out, but thanks for immediately telling me it's shit. I, like, 
I guess. I also don't like Coldplay, but I think it's unfair to like just inform you of something and just insert your opinion in there. That's so lame. Aboard a bus en route to the facility, Quinn meets a band of troublesome misfits who dub themselves the Loonies. Several of these supposed to be lovable characters die during the film, but you won't be sad. Instead, you'll be pleased because it means the movie is nearly over. I honestly, I don't think the goal was to be sad. I think the goal was to be like, yes, what an epic way to go. What an amazing way to sacrifice yourself or holy Holy shit, that predator just like chopped that dude in half. Like that's, we're not going for like meaningful emotion. What did you watch? Eat predator love is what you watched. <laughs> <laughs> Together with Casey, who shows less interest in science than a Teletubby. How do you know how much interest a Teletubby has in science? <laughs> they go like, -ka 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 -mo -ka -ka -ka. you don't know what they're fucking saying. They could be solving cold fusion. Like you have no idea what Dipsy Doodle or whatever the fuck they're. How are we talking about Teletubbies again? This came up in another video. They have TVs in their stomachs. They, they love technology. It's a part of them. They probably know more than you. And honestly, they probably come up with better shit than Apple, who recently just goes, um, are, are screens a little bigger? New phone! Weirdly, the Predator isn't all that evil next to Sterling K. Brown as the sinister head of the task force studying it. He struts around cursing like a sailor as he tries to kill Quinn and his cronies for some reason. Well, you can't say for some reason. Like, it, there's, there's a reason. Like, it's apparent. And explained. explained. Apparent and explained. <laughs> yeah, it's like, a, it's like just really obvious ghosts. It's solved mysteries. The show. It's almost the movie's biggest waste of talent. Almost, because the next one's gonna be the biggest one. What is it? But that honor goes to the casting of young actor Jacob Tremblay as Quinn's son, Rory. As good as the 11-year-old is, here he's made to play a stereotypical autistic boy. A stereo... That's a thing now? Like before we were celebrating like championing people who have autism and are on the spectrum and now it's like, oh, well, he's like a stereotypical autistic boy. So we can't like champion that anymore. That's lame. We're, we're actually going for, you know, diversity, acceptance, and like recognizing that people are people, but now it's stereotypical autistic. That's, that's bullshit. <laughs> I can see you just being like, oh, another fucking gay wedding. The character, as written, is rife with offensive autism cliches. For instance, he's a savant who can master any computer, even one from Planet Predator, and excels at chess. But worse is a plot line involving autism and a dubious scientific theory that will leave parents fuming. I feel like at some point you should realize that there's aliens, there's gore, there's cheesy humor, ridiculous action, and an autistic boy who is pretty much a plot device but used as a badass and that should all just be accepted like you should just accept that all of this is in this movie even if you're like this is ridiculous or that's so stereotypical or they're just making it so he can figure out the alien stuff so we can move the plot along the answer to that is yes they are but also did you see that alien predator just cut that motherfucker in half this movie's great because that's why you go and if you didn't go for that reason, I don't know what to tell you. You were expecting to eat predator love. I don't know, you probably should have seen Crazy Rich Asians. Or you'd just get upset about, you know, stereotypical Asians. I don't know what you're mad about, Johnny. What did you guys think of the predator? Did you have fun? I thought it was incredibly similar to Predator, and therefore I had a good time. Is it great? I don't know. I, I just had fun, and that's pretty much the point of the whole thing. We'd love to hear what you thought of Johnny Oleksinski's review. Uh, I'd be kind of curious to hear what you have to say down in the comments. And if it's your first time here, of course, hit the subscribe button and the little bell right next to it so you can get notified every single time we have another video and you're gonna see some on the screen right now and you should click one. Oh wait. Till we see you next time, geek out and game on.